What is up? Fellas, JPS delivers here. Madden 2006, Madden NFL 06. Gameplay the Saints franchise. This is the first game of the season. Technically, week two. Um, forgot who it was. I think it was just one of the teams again, uh, like I've been doing. Um, just not necessarily cutting ahead. But uh, first game of the season happens to be against a team that uh, we already filmed against. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, already played the Falcons in uh, season one. I know that was one of the gameplays, but hey. It's a team that uh, I think we lost to, if I'm correct. I don't know. I know we beat the fucking ears in season one to end the season. Still in the playoffs anyways, but that was an epic overtime game in Tampa. But going up against the Falcons, Alex Smith. A pretty solid defense with... Uh, I mean, shit. Speaking of no defense, uh, Walter Jones at left tackle. Uh, Willie Rove. So, like, really probably easily the best duo of tackles probably in the league at this point in this fantasy franchise i mean hey, i mean willie rose a fucking beast i mean for a third round pick the dude's a boss the dude's a fucking boss i mean part of that chiefs team with that uh blocked like with uh will shields and uh yeah, i already forgot the other three players but they're also like in their 90s and shit like that but not a good start to this game this defense is actually pretty fucking badass. Willie McGinnis, they have two pretty good solid corners, not shut down by any means, even though um, it's going to kind of seem that way, but a slow start, three and out to start off the game, just not starting off all too well whatsoever. But fortunately enough, we're facing uh, Alex Smith, and Alex Smith is uh, nothing to write home about. Speaking of right there, nice turnover, giving the ball right to us, and here we go, Aaron Brooks. I mean, Deuce McAllister, it's a shame that he got injured in uh, pretty much halfway through the season last time out before the playoffs and i felt like we had you know pretty good pretty good ass running game without him right here trying to utilize mike williams and then i throw an absolute shit pass um that's just it was literally me forcing it uh, just like you'd see quarterbacks force the ball in real life i was trying to force it myself controlling the quarterback aaron brooks and it was a terrible choice on the play and this was a terrible choice as well uh, didn't even try to, you know, uh, take over for like a user swat or something like that with Charles Woodson. However, though, he does end up catching up to him. So it's not a touchdown as we've seen usually on those type of plays. However, though, Cadillac Williams, who had a nice start to his career in Tampa Bay, speaking of, playing for the Falcons this time in this fantasy franchise, gets the rushing touchdown, a nice broken tackle right away. That's an unfortunate pick right there. That's already two picks on the young day on the road in Atlanta in the dome so no excuse whatsoever for whether or whatnot but again a solid ass fucking play Alex Smith might have died on that play but you know I don't think uh, anybody back then even at this point we're checking on uh, anybody's pulse after a hard hit or a concussion to be honest until you know well the NFL PA started doing shit about it but here we go Aaron Brooks I can tell y'all what I'm pretty sure there was double digit sacks in this game between both teams Terrible pass right here, and we're off to a wonderful start and taking quite the gamble passing the ball on, well, what was a hell of a play by Chris Gamble on the nice interception, and then, uh, well, he ended up getting a pick six on that one, so that's nicely done for uh, the sake of Aaron Brooks. So he's already thrown a touchdown pass just to the other team, and then, unfortunately, I don't. I was trying to th pass the ball to Antonio Gates, obviously, but trying to lead him to the outside. I don't know what happened there, but there you go. There's a sack by our defense, which is pretty fucking impressive, led by Brian Erlacher. Could have been also led by Roy Williams, except uh, I don't know if y'all remember, but nice, uh, another nice turnover in our favor, considering we need as much as we possibly fucking can at this point. But uh, getting the ball back, not really able to do too, too much with it at all. The running game's not even doing anything. There's another sack right there, and that was just, I mean, that was so bad. I was terrible at this at the beginning of this game. I mean, like, absolutely dog shit. Incomplete pass. But this, uh, just, thank God we had a couple of these turnovers. It probably would have been, like, 21-0, to 28-0 zero, to, zero to start this game. But again, thank God Alex Smith is the quarterback on the other team. And that's an incomplete pass. Uh, I mean, did Alex Smith have a, was it him having a, a career year before he got injured? Or was it, I think it might have been before he got injured because I think the Redskins gave him money after he got injured. And guess what? Daryl Haskins now, uh, right? I think Daryl Haskins. Or am I fucking saying a different name on that one? Mr. Haskins, now the quarterback out of Ohio State. 
going to have a sophomore season looking to improve and Ron Rivera there. Um, I mean, they can only go up considering how they played uh, last season, unless they're playing the Giants in which they shat on them. But speaking of starting to get some strides in this game, Deuce McAllister, like I was saying earlier about him being injured halfway through the season, the dude was on pace for like nearly 2,000 yards on the ground. Dude was well over 100 yards averaging per game. And here we go, finally getting the running game established and starting to, you know, take a, quite a bit of pressure off of Aaron Brooks. And right when I say that, the pressure comes, and bam, he gets another sack. I'm pretty sure that's now three interceptions on the day and three sacks. But there we go, finally reaching Mike Williams with the 99 jump, the huge body. Uh, when looking at it, trying to see, I mean, T.O., 32 at this point so you give it two seasons and he might be below 92 overall or in below the 90s you just never know how they're going to regress at this point but speaking of older players that just seem to not really get that much worse as he got older beautifully done on that interception by Charles Woodson looking like him in Michigan but there you go T.O. speaking of T.O. incomplete pass I threw it a little too late but also at the same time do you blame me considering how shit I've been throwing already? I was nervous as fuck at this point. There's no reason for me to like try to push it down the field all too, too much. I know we got lucky on that Mike Williams pass, but still, I mean, it was just it was pretty bad. But here we go. Again, a sick-ass play by the old man, Charles Woodson. Nicely done. Uh, finally, I get a user swat after getting beat down the field. But towards the end of the half here, have just enough time. I've noticed that we've had pretty good success in the past trying to run out with like a four or five wide receiver shotgun set done pretty well and uh here we go pass out to to getting down the field about nine yards and then on the third down conversion trying to find our man right there mike williams who we're really going to want to build on like i said to's getting older he's not getting any younger i mean the dude was still beasting and feasting at his older age um, I, I don't remember i mean if anybody wants to leave a comment on uh, the video on like if y'all remember how like how well he did in Cincinnati when like him and Chad Ocho Ocho Cinco were uh, you know all over ESPN I think they were like talking to Gruden in the bus about what you know get your popcorn ready that shit I don't know how well he did that year I know Carson Palmer was the quarterback I think Carson Palmer got injured that season I don't know correctly but all I know all I know is it did not go as well as they thought they played better with T.J. Huzmanzada and Chad Johnson they ever did with T.O. and Chad, uh, Chad Ochocinco. So, you know, leave it at that. Nice run again. I think the second half, just complete polar opposite of how we performed in the first half right there. Just getting a little too uh, happy right there with the Jukes. But I'll take it. It was a nice 15-yard run. And now, pretty much at that point, a negative 15-yard sack, if you, wanna, if you will. Maybe say 15-yard sack. And then, bam, another interception. And I thought, you know, hey, maybe rough in the passer. Nope. Personal foul. Five-yard face mask on that one. Or is it even considered a per I guess it's still a personal foul. It's just not 15 yards like every face mask is now. And then should have been picked off. But, unfortunately, it is not. And uh, our defense played really well. And is playing really well at this point, considering getting three turnovers like that on a day that's already been four or five. I think, pretty sure it's four interceptions against Mr. Aaron Brooks, and there you go, play action running again, nice 10, 15 yard catch by T.O., and then trying to get it down the field, I tried to throw it down the field to T.O., I'm pretty sure that never works until it's like one or, once or twice, but Mike Williams really making a couple key catches in this game, and the key to this game, in my opinion, was the second half fucking onslaught of a man named Deuce McAllister, this is going to be his revenge tour, I know we're talking about Vince Young, you know, uh, Cam Newton MVP seasons ahead of us for season two in the other fantasy franchises. But Aaron Brooks did complete shit in training camp. Did not improve whatsoever on the all Madden thing. But hey, you know, fortunately enough, this is a solid team overall. If we fix that shit and get the passing game going, use his feet like this a little bit, I think we could have a hell of a run come playoff time. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. Considering uh, the, the injury-prone history of Mr. Deuce McAllister, fortunately enough, though, his injury rating did not go below to where it would be considered injury-prone. I'm pretty sure there were, were, I mean, at this point, I'm pretty sure there was, yeah, like, uh, 
badges or roles at this point. But hey, this guy's a boss. At this point in his career, he's got like 92, 93 speed, and the dude's just large and in charge, marching down the field. And there you go. Mr. Gamble took his gamble that time, and it's going to pay off for us on that bet as it's going to lead to a first down and extra yardage. Now we have the lead because of the other rushing touchdown. Second rushing touchdown, Chris Perry. Sick move on the outside. That's going to get it done more and more. And then Mr. Chris Cooley on the catch. The man that started his career off at fullback, then moved to tight end. Y'all remember that Nike commercial, or maybe it was Gatorade? Or I, no way it was Gatorade, right? I think it was a Nike commercial in which Chris Cooley, like, it was like a, like, CGI commercial to where it was like him punching through a wall and also catching it. And there you go. Another sack on the day. Make it three sacks by Jason Babin. And I think it's like two by another player and one by a third for this Saints defense. Looking impressive. Trying to get it more and more down the field. Make it safe. And there you go. Lucky, uh, well, unlucky number five right there. That's definitely not a thing, but it was in this game. Five interceptions thrown by Aaron Brooks to start the season off. Um, God, we'll be fucking lucky, y'all, if uh, if he can get the perfect ratio for this. But here you go. Pretty much one of the last first downs. And what, I mean, nice comeback. 27 points basically scored in like the last two and a half quarters. And that's a win, fellas. I'm pretty sure we are now 2-0 uh, on the season. Undefeated to start it off. Alex Smith and them. I mean, it's not that impressive of a team when you think about it. Aaron Brooks, yeah, you better be fucking happy and pumped considering that you had the, probably the worst performance in your career on this one. I'm pretty sure none of his performance, even playing quarterback for the Cowboys, were that bad. One touchdown, the one to Chris Cooley. More so a Chris Cooley catch and run and falling into the end zone. 117 yards on the day by Deuce McAllister. Two touchdowns to go with it. Chris Perry ran well. It was a hell of a rushing day in the second half for us. And then Mike Williams leads the way for receiving yards. Considering we only threw for 117 yards, if you add up all the uh, you know positive plays and the sacks against... Okay, so no one got two sacks. Four players with sacks. Three by Bavin. And then Starks and second-year player sophomore Dan Cody. And then Bell, I think, the outside linebacker for us, who's a nice compliment, a speedy player and athletic to go alongside Brian Erlacher. And then uh, rookie player right there, outside linebacker. I mean, hey, when you run the ball at least 30, 35 times in a game and probably 30 times in the second half, I'm pretty sure the top tackler on their team is going to be some linebacker, especially that how far we are running it on the outside towards the end of the game. Getting it done. And there you go, looking at all the players that had interceptions. Ferrer had a couple beast-ass plays in this game as well, but Willie Rove gave up a sack. So did Walter Jones. I mean, and also, oh yeah, like I was talking earlier at the very, very beginning, um, Walter Jones pretty much expected to be a badass offensive lineman. He wasn't drafted overall, you know, first overall like a Chris Long or Orlando Pace, but still one of the best of his era. So a nice win there. As always, fellas, take it easy and see y'all next video.